And ladies and gentlemen, here we are on Cloud Kingdom. And down at the bottom left-hand corner of the map, we have our purple Zerg player from NV. It is Moonglade. And his opponent here in the top right-hand corner, yeah, the blue Zerg, purple and blue Zerg. This is going to be fun. We have Gamma Bear Sen. Gamma Bear. Not quite a gummy bear. No. Quite, in fact, a more volatile version of a gummy bear. Better at StarCraft. Certainly. Yeah. Better at StarCraft. Better at all. Well, the, I mean, it comes inherent that he's going to be better at killing things. Yeah. Gamma Razor, pretty good at that. I mean, there's a couple of gummy bears that are broken top eight he masters. He may not be but a Gamma Ray, though. He could just be like like the Gamma symbol, you know? The little little curly... But it would be cool if he was curly. a Gamma Ray, because then he just turned into the Hulk at times, and then just Hulk smash everyone down and, and win tournaments that way. You would expect him way. to be green. Yeah. You would expect him to be green. Or maybe the Red Hulk, for those of you that are Hulk fans out there. Sen, you wouldn't like him when he's angry. <laughs> um, let's see here. As both players have opened basically the same way so far, no deviations yet. We'll see if we get a 14 pull out of these guys, or if both plan to go for a hatch first. Uh, this is a map where you can't actually exploit your opponent with early pools because you know right where they're at and the walk distance isn't all that large. Yeah. Um, you do see it from time to time. But in this case, it looks like we're going to get a 15 hatch out of uh, Sen and a quicker pool, a 15 pool out of Moonglade. Well, you know, the, the second you started talking about exploiting, I thought, well, if anybody's going to do that, it's going to be Moonglade. This guy, he's kind of just, uh, he's like, look, he's a, a human game shark, right? A he human up, game shark. He picks up a copy of Pokemon. He's like, I know exactly what to do. I'm going to find all the TMs. Picks up a copy of Counter-Strike, Warcraft, Original Brood War, StarCraft 2. It doesn't matter what game you give this guy. He is good at it. I loved my game shark when I was a kid. But unfortunately, uh, like I look back at it now, and when my parents used to be the person or my grandparents would buy games for me, whatever, I didn't have any inherent value. I didn't spend my own money on it. So cheat, 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 cheat. Let's just go God mode right away. <laughs> like that was my approach. And now I kick myself for it because I, oh. I just I can't cheat in games anymore at all. Yeah. I just, it just is no fun to me. You can't, you know, I, I guess I'm going to admit this. So in Counter-Strike 1.6, okay. I hacked, man. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, no. I was on this server called Kentucky You're Sharpshooters. Fired. Stop it. Look, That's I learned my lesson. I was so sad. I made all these friends on this server. I had, like, so many friends. And I, I was on it a long time before I started hacking, and I had made all these friends. And then, then I wanted to be good. I wanted I wanted to impress them. So I was like, all right, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to download this thing. And I remember, like, going on the websites and trying to, like, I don't know, half of it was, like, evading the cheats, honestly, but um, they're, like, evading getting caught. But, oh, and one, one day it just pops up on the screen in big red. It's, like, is using aimbot. I forget my name at the time. I, I was, I, but I remember my one best friend, Maverick. That was his name on Kentucky Sharpshooters. He was so disappointed. Aww. So sad. And I was just like, I'm sorry. Kibbles. And then I was banned forever from the server. Kibbles is a cheater. Never got to see any of them again. <laughs> it was the saddest moment of my life, man. I'm, like, getting tears in my eyes right now. Well, we have people who aren't cheaters here. We have Sen and we have Moonglade. And, uh, that was harsh. That was harsh, Kevin. <laughs> a couple of differences between them. Sen actually leaving two workers on gas throughout the whole time, which is a little interesting because usually you'll see players just drop on three if they decide to go heavier bailing roach, uh, or they'll just drop off and only put one on there if they just want to make sure they have enough for a couple of defensive bailings. So Sen has a purpose for his gas. Moonglade, too, as he's left three on gas pretty much the entire time. Circling speed coming up for both players, but, of course, Sen did have that established a bit earlier on. Of course, with the uh, with the expansion, got to get yourself a bailing nest, although Sen was actually the, uh, you know, Sen actually putting up this uh, Zergling speed, etc. pretty quickly, and going after 16 lings now has decided to completely bypass the, uh, the bailing nest for now. Yeah, it looks like uh, we are going to have some aggression out of Sen. I mean, he doesn't now. OK, he is going to opt to get the Bailing Nest, actually. And this is going to allow him to definitely put on some additional pressures. We're seeing all of his gas pulled up. But no, he's going to start a lair behind it, Kevin. Looks like this isn't going to be all that invested. Just uh, so, I mean, I mean, he's still making all these links. Make no mistake about that. But he's already kind of transitioning out of it. He's making drones behind it. He's making a lair. It's just a scare tactic. Well, it's a pretty good scare tactic because he's actually going to kill a couple of drones with it. Uh, he is actually up by five drones at this stage of the game, so he's been macroing well, and everything's been hitting pretty much on all fronts for him. Bailing's morphing in now for Moonglade. Bailing Ness is not quite done for Sen at the moment, but he has effectively delayed his opponent's tech for a while. Moonglade has the potential to move up into layer, but hasn't done so quite yet, hasn't added on additional gases. Um, we actually have a pretty big engagement here in the middle, but it looks like Sen's going to run away. But with his layer tech, 
Tech with four gas. Um, I always hope, of course, that we'll see Mutas, but definitely either those <laughs> or Infestors are going to be a possibility. Yeah, it's, it's certainly viable on this map as well. Uh, here come the links from Moonglade, guys. There's no Banelings at home right now for Sen. Uh, looks like he's going to start move, morphing a couple in. Take a look at Moonglade. Nope. He's just prepped to turn around and go home. He's like, look, I took a little bit of damage here, but I don't... If I press this, I could just lose the game now, so... Yeah, I mean, you're always susceptible to those counterattacks. If you commit a little too much, you take that one wrong baneling hit, and that's why, I don't know, I'm glad that Zerg players have started to go away from the long, just Zergling, baneling, tug-of-war style battles that happen. Uh, Sen now going after Aspire. It's about a third of the way finished at this point. Moonglade a little bit farther behind on all of his uh, on all of his tech, but otherwise we're even on workers, we're even on zerglings, pretty much even on banelings, queens, relatively similar. So uh, not too much separating these guys other than the much quicker tech from Sen. Uh, this uh, banelings <laughs> these are gonna be the most ridiculously. Uh, uh, how do you like this build for this mutilus right now, Kevin? All right, he opened up really, really greedy with a lot of, you know, economy, 15 hatch and such. Droned up a lot. Yeah, he built a spine crawler, but other than that, he pretty much just droned, then popped out 16 links to make it look like he was, you know, not intending to tech like crazy. And and now he went for this super fast spire. These are going to be the fastest mutas that weren't the most obvious fastest mutas. I think is what I'm going for. Yeah. It's like, you know, you can rush muta, and it's really, really obvious. These are not obvious mutas, but they're still insanely fast. There are eight of them on the way right now. And Moonglade, Kevin, is also going for a spire, and it's only like 35 seconds in right now. Yeah, well, already the mutalists are popping up now. I, I, I have a feeling that there should be some sort of a meme now. Obvious mutas are obvious, but um, Moonglade sending in Bailings one at a time. He wants to try and make sure he doesn't keep all of these clumped. Uh, it looks like he's going to be able to get... Oh, nice job by Sen actually taking out a big group of links. Another wow. one as well. Moonglade doing a nice job to protect these, and he's actually going to swing it with his Mutas in time to be able to save this hatchery. Great play out of Sen. He establishes an earlier base. He's way ahead of his opponent in that regard. All of the Banelings have been picked off. He's got his Mutas light years ahead. Uh, things are just looking really, really great, and I think Moonglade, uh, you know, with just finishing up the Spire, is going to be in a pretty bad spot soon. Yeah, this is... You're absolutely right. I mean, what can he do from here? Well, he's not going to invest all of his resources into Mutas. And I have to say, I like that play, because if he had, he can't win the air fight right now. I mean, it's going to be 10 Mutas versus, what, 8? 9? Yeah, this is not an easy fight for him to win. So, looks like... Oh, nope, here they come. 11 Mutas on the way right now. I guess he feels like he doesn't have any option, uh, which, could, you know, could really could be the case in all reality. And Ling's ugh, even going to run by now into the main. Yeah, this is a rough spot for Moonglade. He pulled all of his anti-air out of position. That was all of his queens. But coincidentally, wow. as soon as he did that, everything starts ducking right into the main and doing more damage. Um, any more workers killed? Not that many. Another worker or two was actually destroyed there. So Moonglade does hold on, but now he's down a base. He's banking resources. He's really just in a tough spot overall. Sen, yeah, the Sen has played this game so crisp. And it's really, I mean, I feel like so much of Moonglade's bad disposition right now that you're referencing is because of, of Sen's just beautiful opening. I can't say how much I like that. Incredibly fast mutas that were not obvious because of the lings, because of the the, uh, the, pot, the banes that he showed. It just didn't look like the most obvious thing in the world. And then uh, Moonglade was caught so off guard. It's well, great. Moonglade did make a lot of mutas there, and he's doing an effective job of regaining map control at the moment. He supply blocked his opponent, forced out a lot of overlords. Um, but we can see that Sen is still at just such a massive advantage. He's going to have his upgrades a little bit quicker than his opponent, about 15 seconds ahead. Uh, Moonglade has a potential, if he can play defensively with these, to win this initial air war, maybe start to kind mm -hmm. of weasel his way back into this, but it's still a very, very difficult task. Aw, oh, Muta's ducking in right now, getting in a little bit of free damage. Damage, Kevin, they're going to take out. No, they get uh, uh, forego the extractor for now, and I, I like that play to send too many times. You know, we see a player overcommit to killing a structure, but now Roach is coming into the third at the same time. Moonglade sustaining a lot of damage right now, and oh, this third is, is it's going to go down. He's not going to be able to hold on to this, and with it, that's going to be two extractors behind. And you know what? The mute is coming back into the natural during all of this once again. And they've actually occupied Moonglade's attention for so long that the Queens weren't able to get off any transfusions. Wow. So a lot of damage suffered. Another extractor goes down, so he's now down by three extractors. And he's going to lose his hatchery for a third time. Hopefully he'll cancel it this go-round. He does, so it's only a 75 mineral loss, but still really, really bad for him. Um, and Sen is just playing oh. magnificently so far. <laughs> he ducked the drone into the extractor to save it. That was so cute. Moonglade, uh... <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, he's doing really good here. It's just Sen is just playing like freaking Kratos right now. Yeah, and there it is. GG from Moon Lady. Tried a last ditch attack with me, but it didn't work out. Absolutely just had a hair follicle fall into my eyeball. Oh, the best timing, isn't it? Yeah, and I couldn't even, I'm like trying to reach it down. Like the camera's going live, Kevin. <laughs> No, oh, what I know, do we right? do? Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's game number one of the bad guys. Don't forget, we have two best of threes today. We not just have, uh, we don't just have Sen and Moonglay. We also have uh, Huck and Desro right afterwards. Yep. Of course, we're getting pretty close now to the end of this uh, of this tournament already. Even though we're in the second round, more than half of the matches have been done. So there's, um, we're going to find out very quickly uh, what players are going to represent the foreigner squad here at the Gome World Championships at uh, IPL Five. If you guys didn't know. We're running the CODIS semifinals and finals at our event, so you yep. definitely want to come out and watch those. We also have the return of the GOM World Championship, where the five best Korean players are going to take on the five best foreigners. We already know Nani and Stefano are there. We're determining the last three players through a tournament uh, to see who will represent the foreigner squad. Still don't know who the uh, who the the Korean squad is going to be, but last time around they based it on GSL results, so I would assume that uh, the likely candidates are players like, you know, Life, and uh, maybe we're going to see players that have been very consistent but haven't had wins and stuff like that, so we could even see. I, I, mean, I don't know how far back they're going to go into GSL results, I guess. So. Yeah, you could also really look at like who players are losing to, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, yeah. Somebody like Don, I, I'm actually not uh, in, uh, the earlier rounds of GSL. Yeah. I don't, I'm trying to think of an example, but one that's not coming to mind. So. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's Don Grinku. Maybe. Look at the people who life knocked out. <laughs> yeah. Marine King's been very consistent lately. Maybe we'll see him. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't really know how it's going to go. We don't have any inside information on that or anything. As soon as we know, though, of course, we'll announce it to you guys. So uh, we're going to run to a commercial break. When we get back, it's going to be time for game number two, though, in our first best of three of the nights. We'll see if Sen can close things out or if Moongly can tie it up on Daybreak.